others, but that's why those books are are mainly read is because they're mainly to do with Christmas. Anyway, welcome to, enough about my books, uh, welcome to uh, Worship with Trinity Baptist Church in Gorta. My name's Wayne Clark, and it's really good to have you with us this morning, whether you're part of our church in uh, Trinity or whether you're uh, watching from anywhere else in the world, whether you're watching live here on Facebook Live or on Zoom, part of our Zoom meeting, or after the event on Facebook or on YouTube, really good to have you with us welcome uh, we're here to worship god today today we're having a, a family service so we've put out a special appeal today to uh, families with younger children don't know if we're going to have many joining us but if you're with us with a, a younger family today really good to have you with us hi hope half term's been good for you and in a moment we're going to give any any youngsters or parents or teachers or school workers an opportunity to tell us how half term has been for you i know some are only halfway through half term and are having a second week of half term so that might be good for you or it might not we'll see uh, so however you're feeling at the moment whether you're feeling in good spirits or whether you're feeling a bit down after the prime minister's um announcement yesterday that we're going to go into another month of more severe shut down uh maybe that you, you're concerned that's affecting your job or your family in some way um well we're with you in heart and mind and spirit today and we're coming together today in the presence of our god to pray for one another and to be together today our theme is light and darkness and jesus the light of the world who shines his light into our hearts and into our lives and into our communities. He is the light in the darkness. Anyway, whoever we are, wherever we're from, whatever our situation, we welcome you. Let's pray. We thank you, Jesus, that you are the light of the world who shines into our situation. And however dark and gloomy we're feeling today, we thank you that you can give us light and you can make us bright we thank you, Lord, that you dispel the dark clouds of gloom that may be around us. Or if we're feeling fine today, we thank you that you continue to light our way and show us the way to go. And we pray, Lord, that that light and brightness may be with us today, that you may be in all that we do as we gather together in your name, Lord, whether we're uh, watching this uh, here on a Sunday morning or at some other time, we pray that here and now we may know your loving presence with us, that we may know your joy in our hearts, and we may know that our Jesus is our strength and our support, and we may offer you, Lord God, our praise and honour and glory, because you are worth all that we can bring. Glory to you, our God, for all that you are and all that you bring as we gather in your name. Amen. We're going to start with a, a song about Jesus, the light coming to us, the light of the world who broke into this world. Uh, if you, uh, you won't be able to hear others singing, but you'll see the words on the screen and hear the music. So please do sing along, sing with those who are in the room with you or just on your own. Uh, we're going to sing Light of the World, You Step Down Into Darkness. Let's sing together. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you, hope of a life spent with you. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely. All together worthy, all together wonderful to me. King of all days, oh so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Created all for love. 
Let's pray. We thank you, Jesus, that you are the light of the world who stepped into darkness. And Lord, in the darkness of our uh, days and darkness of our communities, in the darkness of our world, we thank you that you are the light that brings brightness, that brings hope, that brings goodness, that brings joy. You are the one that we can trust in when all around is sinking sand, when all around is unsure and uncertain. We can put our trust and our hope in you. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you that as the uh, the world around seems to get darker, uh, particularly as uh, it's physically darker as we draw closer to winter, but also things around us seem to be getting more despairing and deeper in uh, in hopelessness. Thank you, Jesus, that we can hold on to you because you are the light. We give you praise. We worship you that you are the God who is not under our circumstances but above our circumstances you are the one who is the god of all might and power and love and goodness and kindness that you are the god of all uh, and all eternity is in your hands we praise you lord and as a community of your people here today here and now we give you praise and gladly offer to you the worship of our hearts and lives and actions and every day we praise you Lord, hear our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. So it's good to be together this Sunday morning. Uh, we welcome you in the name of our Lord Jesus. We want to welcome anyone who's been enjoying half term. I know uh, Quaker and Dulcie and the girls are, uh, have been on half term and um, others have been on half term. Carol, have you been on half term? I don't know who else has. I wonder if anyone's going to... Well, I, I think... Um, Adjacum girls, you, but you're off, off school, not just because of half term, but because um, you're also uh, in isolation, as it were, aren't you, at the moment? So uh, that's one reason you're off school at the moment. Um, anyone got a, anyone share with us how half term or any any other holiday you're having is is going at the moment? Please unmute yourself and share with us how how your half term has gone. 
How about you, Joy? Have you been enjoying half term? How's it going? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. We, we play all the time. Have you, have you just been at home or have you been able to get out at all? Um, just staying at home. Well, that's the nature of being, that's because you've, um, because your mommy's been away that you've had to stay in the house, have you? Yeah, just in my house for 14 days. You have to stay in the house for 14 days. What good things have you been doing? Tell us what good things you've been doing. Sometimes I've been doing some work which is a bit boring. Oh, okay. Sometimes I've been doing that work is very fun. It's been fun as well. So you've been doing school work? Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes, but not all the time. Okay. You do, do you do things like games and activities together as a family? Mm, not really, just me and mommy. That is working. Yes. But you and you and mommy and F will play games and things. Yeah. That that has to work, doesn't he? Mm. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Has anyone else got anything to share about what you've been doing? Who else? Who else is here? Um, Jude, are you? Is Jude here? John's there. Is Jude there? Yeah, can I, I can't I can't see very well on my screen who we've got here. Jude's here, isn't he? There's Jude. I can see Jude now. You've been you've been on half term, Jude? Yeah, yeah. What have you been doing? Uh, I've been doing uh, my my school homework. You've been doing school work as well. Oh yeah. wow. And I've been doing uh, some other activities. This school has been close. Yeah. What's what's been the best thing you've done this week? Some, anything in particular? Uh, the best things I've uh, done is relax this uh, Relaxing. Yeah. Catching up on your sleeping. <laughs> okay, thank you. Anyone else been enjoying half term? Carol, have you had a half term holiday or are you if you worked through it? Um, I worked three days. So right. I had days off. A little bit of half term, but not much. Yeah. Have you done fun things? Um, we went for a walk around Dove Stones. That was really good. And then I had a day where we went to Chapel on the Frith and I saw a lot of my history and um, my f old family and graves and um, to places that I've not been to for 30 odd years, yes. Yeah. Very nice. It was lovely. Is that where your family roots are? Yes, part of my family roots, yes. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Good. The family name is Frith and it's from Chapel on the Frith. Is it? Oh, good. Thank you for that. Anyone else want to tell us about what you've been doing? Anything different? Okay, well, um, today is, I don't know how many of you know, I, I didn't know, I must admit until this week and I was looking into it, but uh, this week is, today in fact, is a special day in uh, if you were in this country 2000 years ago. Now, I don't think any of us can remember 2000 years ago, but 2000 years ago or that time ago, around about the time of Jesus, if you lived in this country or in the in the British Isles, you'd be celebrating the 1st of November as New Year's Day, because the people who lived in the British Isles uh, uh, around about that time, 1500, 2000 years ago, used to celebrate New Year at about this time of the year. They didn't have the calendar we had, to be honest, but around about the 1st of November, they celebrated New Year at the, around about this time of the year because the harvest had been brought in and they could see winter was coming. And this was the time that they celebrated New Year. And they had a belief, uh, they had a pagan religion, a, a, a not, not a Christian religion at all, but a, a religion that believed in spirits. And they believed 
that at the new year time, the spirits of the dead walk the earth, which was a bit scary. Um, but then a lot of them became Christians. And like all of our Christian festivals, Christians decided that a lot of the pagan festivals would be Christianized, would become Christian festivals. And the Christian church took over this date, which had been the pagan new year, to make it more positive. And rather, be, rather than being scared of people who had died in the past, they used it as a date to remember good people who'd lived in the past. And they called it All Saints Day, which wasn't to do with, you know, what we would normally call saints. It was to remember people who had lived good lives for Jesus in the past. That's what saints are. Saints are people like hopefully you and me. Well, anyone, the Bible says anyone who is a Christian who lives for Jesus is a saint. We are those who are made holy by Jesus. Anyway, All Saints Day was the day to remember those who had lived in the past, who had lived good lives, and particularly those who had lived for Jesus, who were remembered on All Saints Day. Or it was another name for All Saints Day was All Hallows Day. In other words, all those people that we hallowed, that we remembered with honour from the past. And the night before All Saints Day became All Hallows Even or e Eve. And then it turned into what these days people call Halloween, which is the night before the evening before All Hallows Day. And that old pagan belief that they had at new, their new year of the dead roaming the earth kind of still stayed around and people started to want to do scary things, which is not nice, which is not what we should be doing. Thinking about spooky things and scary things and letting the evil come into um, our lives, because that's not what we should be doing at any time of the year. And it's not what this time of the year should be about. But what we can do at this time of the year is to celebrate those who have lived for Jesus in the past and celebrate light and not darkness. And there's something else we can celebrate at this time of the year as well, because October the 31st, uh, that was yesterday, is also remembered by many Christians as Reformation Day. It's the day one of our heroes of our faith, Martin Luther, starting a movement calling people back to the Bible and knowing God personally through faith in Jesus, not through religion or through priests, but through knowing Jesus as our saviour personally by having faith in him and sticking to what the Bible says of how we should live. So October the 31st is a day to remember those things in our past, that man of God. But whatever we do on this this time, this weekend, it's a good day to remember people who have had a good influence on, on our lives. Perhaps people in history who have been inspirational to us when we read about them in a book or we, we see a film about them. Or perhaps someone in our life who has helped us, perhaps someone who has taught you about Jesus, someone who has helped you in your church when you were younger, or even now if you're still quite young, or someone who teaches you about Jesus day by day, someone you can read about or someone you can think about or someone you remember in your lifetime who has helped you about Jesus. So just for a moment, I want us to think, to answer this question, who do you remember? Who are you? could you think about today who has helped you know Jesus better? who has helped you as to be an inspiration to live better for Jesus. Now, perhaps for you, that's one of those great heroes of our faith. Perhaps it is Martin Luther, if you know about him, or perhaps it is one of the great missionaries like David Livingston or William Carey, who's, who started the, the BMS, or perhaps it's um, someone who uh, was a great hero of of the faith in this country or a country where you're from or somewhere else. Perhaps it's a great church leader or mission leader, or perhaps it's someone closer to home, someone who taught you, someone who led you to faith in Jesus or 
a, a Christian teacher who has inspired you or someone you've simply read their book and it's inspired you or you've listened to, you watch them on, t on on a film or on TV and they've inspired you maybe there's a person some of you all know I I, I wrote a book man, about a man called Hugh Stowell Brown who lived in the, the 1800s who was an inspiration to me who I, I, I read what he wrote and I read about his life and I thought, this is a good man. I, I wish I could be a, a pastor and a teacher and a leader like him. And, and I liked him so much that I researched his history and wanted to um, write down his story. I don't necessarily want to be like him in every, in every way, but in, in many ways, he's an inspiration to me. I wonder if there's someone like that who's an inspiration to you that you can remember today. Just think about that for a moment. And if there's something you want to share, then we'll have an opportunity for you to share it. Is there anyone that you, that, who is a, an inspiration who you'd like to remember today, who was, who is a, who to you could say, this is a saint. This is someone who has lived for Jesus, who I think is a, inspiration to me. I wonder if there's anyone on our Zoom meeting or anyone on Facebook who wants to put it onto the Facebook uh, to say, uh, this is one of my heroes. I'll, I'll keep an eye on Facebook if anyone wants to write on the Facebook comments. This is my hero in the faith. I would um, comment when I was a, a young Christian, um, I was given a book um, called Shadow of the Almighty which was uh, the life story, in a way, of Jim Elliot. Yeah. Um, and Jim Elliot was one of five missionaries who were killed by the, uh, what were then known as the Orca Indians in, um, in uh, South America uh, on their first attempt to reach them. And one thing that's always stuck in my mind is a comment that he made in his journal. Um, he is no fool who gives what he cannot keep. To gain what he cannot lose and uh, that's always stuck in mind it's sort of as, as a young christian that book had a big influence i felt on me lots of other things since but that's one of the very early ones in my my christian walk thank you jeff anyone else want to unmute yourself as we say and and share a, a hero of your faith Hi, Pastor. Yeah. Hi, Stephen. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just want to, I just want to appreciate uh, not one person, but um, fellowship in church. Um, you know, the little words of comfort, little words of support people give you in church. Um, there has been many in my own life that, you know, just the little talk after service or even before service. Um, Sometimes God just uses people like that just to talk to things happening to me um, in my personal life. So it's, it's something I, I've always, um, I just, I know that God works when we do the little talks, um, even not in the service, but the fellowship that we have in church. It's been a blessing to me over the years in my Christian work. So Good, thank you, David. That's helpful, thank you. Yeah, we're all we're all saints to one another in that sense, aren't we? All inspiring one another if, if fellowship works well. That's what it's about. Um, I I remember um, again a book I read very early on um, was the the book The Cross and the Switchblade um, and David Wilkerson and how he um, shared his faith. Um, even though his life was in danger and and just um, wanted to share the good news of Jesus with people who um, had probably never heard it and really needed to hear it. Um, so so he's he's somebody that I remember had a had a big influence on me. Um, 
and Afia has put on Facebook that her Sunday school teacher really inspired her. Yeah. Thank you. Good morning, Pastor Wayne. Yeah, hi. This is Kenny. Hello, Kenny. Yes. Um, you. Are they, right, hi, Kenny. Oh, yes, I'm fine, thank you. I would say um, um, over the years, um, the book that I've read, um, that has really inspired me. Um, it's been, um, um, there's been quite a lot actually, but one um, that's particularly stood out for me um, is um, Stormy Omutin about the power of a praying woman, yeah. a praying mother, and um, a praying wife. So that book has really encouraged me and it's also helped me in my, um, my Christian walk. And in particularly, is that it has actually helped me to be able to encourage other people, like my friends, and talk to people, you know, about God and um, the awesome things that I got from the book. And being able to share with people is actually really um, um, giving me that, you know, that move and the the push to to keep studying more. So yes, great, yeah, yeah. thank you. A stormy o, o Martian, isn't it? Something like that is the name mm. of the woman who's wrote, written those books. Yeah, I think Stormy or yeah, something like that. Martian, Thank you, yes. Kenny. That's that's really helpful. If anyone wants to read those books, they're really good. Yeah. Thank you. I'd like to share about my um, the person who led me to Christ. Um, name is Peter Haywood, a minister. Yeah. And um, he called at my house one day and. Um, he said my name had come into his head and uh, he led me to Christ that day and uh, he has, um, we're, we're still in touch and it, uh, he's had um, a powerful healing ministry even though his health has been awful, he, he, he suffered bad health nearly all his life and yet he has this powerful healing ministry. And um, even now in these days, he's, he's really quite poorly, but yet he's still on fire for Jesus and Jesus is still leading him on and he's still preaching online in his church. And um, he, he's somebody who's always been there and he's very special to me and one of my heroes. Fantastic, thank you, Janet. Okay, we're going to move on if that's all right. We're going to we're going to move on. Sorry if anyone else is is anyone else itching to say anything. I can't see they are. So we're going to move on. Thank you for those. So uh, today we're going to be thinking about how the Lord is with us, uh, the light in the darkness. We're going to sing a song uh, now about uh, praising God, who is um, amazing and exciting, and as it says in this song, colossal. Uh, I think you'll remember this. We've sung it in church a couple of times. Uh, it's oi oi, we are going to praise the Lord. Uh, in this version, we're going to see it sung by the, the, the man who wrote the song, Doug Hawley. So I hope you enjoy this. And if you want to join in with some dancing and some actions, please do so. Oi oi, we are going to praise the Lord.
it's sometimes hard to understand how the God who made the earth and man would point a finger down from heaven and shout. Oh yeah, the words are a bit behind the, the, the sounds in that, but I uh, hope you enjoyed that anyway and also help to lift your heart to praise our God in that song, a great song there by Doug Hawley. He's an exciting, power rising, colossal, humongous, mongous God, whatever that means, but he's a great God who's worthy of our praise. Uh, welcome if you're joining us. This is uh, Wayne Clark, uh, pastor at Trinity Baptist Church in Gorton with our worship today, a family service all about light in the darkness and also being remembering on this All Saints Day, remembering those who have gone before us or those who are still with us, who inspire us to live for Jesus and to be lights in the darkness. Uh, welcome whoever you are, wherever you're from. But I want to say to church members, particularly today, you only have one day left. Did, if you got my email newsletter on Friday, I wonder if you noticed the mistake in it, which said that nominations for um, deacons and officers closed tomorrow. Well, it was wrong. It's actually tomorrow now. <laughs> when I wrote it, I was thinking it was Sunday, but of course it was only Friday when you got the letter. So it didn't mean tomorrow, it meant Monday. But it is now tomorrow that nominations close for deacons and church officers. Uh, we've got up to six vacancies for deacons and we're also praying for a new church secretary. Uh, we've had a number of nominations in already, so thank you for those, but nominations do close at the end of tomorrow and should go to Jeff Beckingham, please, if you want to nominate someone to be uh, a church officer or deacon. You'll have had a letter about that if you're a church member. Contact me if you want to know more. Uh, Wednesday fellowship evening continues at eight o'clock every Wednesday alternating prayer and Bible study this week we've got a prayer meeting on zoom at eight o'clock uh, the Trinity phone message is still on 01615094409 where you can uh, call that and hear a, a message from me each week which changes on Friday evening uh, please pass that number on to those who are not on social media or on the internet particularly or if you want to hear it yourself uh the church is on twitter at bapt gorton please do follow that please do stay in touch with one another why don't you encourage someone else in the church this week get in touch with them and see how they are and please let me know if you know of people who have particular pastoral needs um it's not giving away any confidences to say we've had a great answer to prayer this week as uh, Kath, who we were praying for last week, is out of hospital and is in a care home. And uh, fantastic news that she's been found a place of safety and a place where she can be cared for and looked after and continue praying for Kath and others. And if you get our weekly newsletter or uh, listen to the uh, prayer, uh, the phone message, you'll know the people we are praying for on a week by week basis. Next Sunday is Remembrance Sunday and we'll be remembering that, including uh, uh, some silence at 11 o'clock here uh, on Zoom at 10.45. Uh, uh, the Zoom meeting starts at about quarter past 10. You can join us anytime from then onwards, remember. So if you're on Zoom, come earlier, then we can have a, have a chance to have a chat with one another. Uh, people are starting to join us quite late on, which is, is OK if that's convenient for you. But if you come earlier, you have a chance to have a bit of conversation and fellowship beforehand and if you are following us on Facebook that's fantastic but if you can come on to Zoom then it's an opportunity also to share and chat with others um, and we can uh, have a bit more something that approximates a bit more to true fellowship on the Zoom meeting than we can on Facebook or on YouTube but thank you however you're joining us we appreciate the time that you give 
to sharing uh, your life with others through our church gathering the best that we can at the moment. Okay, we're going to, oh, let's do birthdays. Uh, if you've got anything special to share now, any special anniversaries or special news to share, please unmute yourself and tell us or put it onto the Facebook and particularly uh, birthdays to celebrate. Birthdays, uh, if you've just had a birthday or first week of November, we'd love to hear about it. Anyone want to take off your mute and tell us that it's your birthday? We'd love to hear that or put it onto the Facebook. Um, however you're watching us on Facebook, we'll try and see it. Uh, please. Wayne, oh, yeah. I don't know if Mandy is joining us today. Oh yeah. She does sometimes, but it's her birthday on Wednesday. Okay, thank you, Jean. Mandy's birthday is, is you planning to celebrate it? Uh, we're going out for a meal on, Ooh, on um, Wednesday. Wednesday. Oh, just got in in time. Yes. I think there'll be a lot of people going out for meals on Wednesday, Jean. <laughs> well, that's if we can book anywhere, yes. You yeah. need to book that early, I would think. Well. <laughs> By Thursday, no way can you go out for a meal. No, no. We've got a family, a birthday in our family coming up later in the month, and we were thinking of going out for a meal this week just to celebrate it early, but uh, I don't think we will. But yeah, okay, happy birthday to Mandy for Wednesday. Anyone else? It's good to see Pat with us. Hello, Pat. Just no Hello, Pastor Wayne. Hi. Yeah, hello. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not be able to join. As I'm speaking, I'm at the football. Every Sunday, Hans has a football match. Right. So I have to bring him. So I just remember, I said, let me come and sit in the car and join you. So I'm at the football pitch. You can see outside. They are playing <laughs> their match. Yeah. And I, I decided that. to join in. Yeah. Thank it's a you, long man. time. Hope yeah. everybody is fine. Hi, everybody. Hello, Hi, everyone. <laughs> Good to have you with us, Pat. Thank you. Thank for you. Thank you. That extra effort, even though you're at the football. Yeah. <laughs> Every Sunday match. That's very bad that I oh. can't help it because I work also on Sundays. So Sundays, when I'm in this Sunday, the following Sunday, I'm out. So like this Sunday, I'm not working. So I have to bring him. The following Sunday, I have to work. Then I have to look for someone to bring him. So it's been very hectic for me. But I mean, with God, you know, yeah. the Lord is my strength. I'm trying to just hold on and uh, yeah, keep going. Thank you. Oh, it's good to have you <laughs> with us, Pat. Thank you for making the extra effort this morning. Bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> it doesn't... Jean, it doesn't look like Mandy is with us, so I, I'm, I'm not sure. We, I don't think we'll sing a happy birthday because it, it, it doesn't sound very good when we sing happy birthday all at different times. So I don't think we'll do it especially for Mandy. But pass on our best wishes to Mandy from our church, won't you? Can't see anyone else um, eager to, um, to speak, so we'll move on. Is that Janice and Eric saying something? No, it isn't. Okay, we're going to sing. We're going to sing before we uh, turn to our uh, talk for today, and we're going to sing about God's light coming into the world, and we're going to sing "Shine, Jesus, Shine." Lord, the light of Your love is shining. Classic song uh, about the the light of Jesus coming into the world and how we should shine for Him. Let's sing "Shine, Jesus, Shine." Just in the midst of the dark, 
Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us. Set us free by the truth you now bring us. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Display your likeness, ever changing from glory to glory. Mirrored here, may our lives tell your story. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Well, it's getting to that time of the year when uh, there's certainly a lot more darkness around than light. Uh, nights are coming in earlier and uh, there's more hours of darkness around than there are hours of light. And we need light. We need light to uh, just to be able to see the things that we do. We need light uh, in all that we do. And uh, certainly in our culture, in the world that we live in, uh, we don't know what we do if we didn't have artificial light, if we didn't have the lights that we have to be able to do the things that we do. I'm sure in your home you've got many different sources of light. So I, I want you to, uh, I'm just going to share this PowerPoint. I hope you can see this. Um, I want you to do something for me as a little game. 
as a little activity as we look at light in the darkness. I want you to share as many different sources of light as you can. Now you can do this in two ways. You can go through your house and to gather, gather together as many different sources of light as you can uh, as a little running around exercise. And if you've got little ones, particularly, you might want to do this. Or if you've got pencil and paper or a phone that you can write things down on, you might just want to write down as many different sources of light that there are in your house as you can think of. And I want you to do it in the next two minutes. Are you ready? Go. So you've got two minutes from now to write down as many sources of light as you can that you have in your house. Be creative, think about different things that shine. Or if you're active, send your kids out or go yourself and gather together different things that shine. What have you got that shines? What can you think of that shines? I wonder what you've got that you can use that shines. Have you got torches? Have you got lamps? Uh, what about that light on your, um, on your cooker? I know you can't bring that to where you are now, but think about that one. What about those, that light inside your microwave? That shines, doesn't it? I wonder what else there is that shines. So um, you've had one minute, you've got one more minute to gather together as, um, as think of people gone to find things in your household, David, to bring things together. We're trying to get together as many different things as we can that shine. I wonder if you've got candles that may not be shining at the moment, but if when you light them, they will shine. I wonder if you've got uh, a light on your phone or on your tablet or on your computer, whether you've got um, lamps that you can plug in, perhaps a lamp by your bedside or lamps in your uh, in your living room, one of those nice fancy standard lamps or one that, what do they call them, up lighters that shine up onto the ceiling. They're, they're very classy, aren't they, that some people have. I wonder if you've got um, a light on your watch. That might be something. All right, you've got 20 seconds left of the two minutes according to my timer. And we'll say that's time up. I wonder how many different sources of light you've come up with. David's got one shining at me. What's that, David? A little, little tiny torch? Little tiny torch. Val's got some, oh, Val's got some like little fairy lights that are actually plugged in. What's that, Eric? Eric's got a torch. Is that a head torch or a? It's a round, round torch I can see there that Eric's got. Jeff's got a. Is that a desk lamp, Jeff? Or a, oh, it's a, that. Oh, that's on your phone, right? Jeff's got a light on his phone. Quaku's just come back. Have you made? Have you made a list in your house there? Joy, have you, how many? How many things have you got on your list? I can't hear you at the moment. So you either have to signal it or that's it. How many things did you get on your list in two minutes? I've got, I've got ten. I've got ten. Read them out to us. Go on. Lamp, oven, microwave, TV, the phone, torchlight, fridge, tablet, computer, and what? Brilliant. <laughs> ten things in your house that happen. There's probably more as well if you think about it for longer. But 10 you thought about in two minutes. That's very impressive. Well done. And where you're sitting, the light shining on your face, where's that coming from? Through the window. Mm. You've, got, you've got the sun's lot, the sunlight coming through the window as well, haven't you? Mm. That's, that's not in your house, but it's kind of shining in your house. Mm. I wonder what else. Has anyone come up with any other ones that, that Joy didn't get? Anything different? Oh, what's that, Rachel? Is that a spot? spot? Ah, now this is very old. Go on then. This is my father's bicycle lamp from the 1930s. Look at that. The 1930s um, it uses acetylene, so I haven't been able to light it because you need to prepare it first. But that's what it is. That is acetylene. What, how, what kind of fuel is that? Oh, it, it smells nasty. <laughs> it's liquid. 
it's it's and it's probably very dangerous as well but that's what they used for bike lights before batteries in the 1930s they use wow. acetylene for welding don't they yeah probably yes Oxy acetylene or something yeah amazing i've got the fridge here the fridge you won't see it but the fridge lights on here now the fridge light so when you open the fridge door it, the light comes on mm. yep. Does it go off when you shut the door? I don't know. <laughs> How do you know? That's the question. I'm not there to see. <laughs> and we've got a little, can you hear me? Yeah, go Dory. We've got a little metal uh, dog. It should really be in the garden, but we have it in the conservatory. And it's got a solar light on it. <laughs> so when the sun shines into the conservatory, then in the evening when it goes dark, this little bulb lights up. Yeah. Very good. And a clock at the side of the bed that yes. also reacts to the darkness and lights up. Right. So that is that solar power as well? Is that no, no, that's electric. Yeah. No. yeah. Good. Some good ideas there. Anyone get anything different? Anyone on Facebook? Oh. What have we got on Facebook? Can you see what we've got on Facebook, Val? Uh, yes, Afia has said a candle, a lighter, lamps, phone, microwave, oven. So lighter was something that we've not had before. Lighter, yeah, thank you, Afia. Excellent. Okay, well, the, the Bible speaks quite a lot about the light in the darkness. Let me share, continue to share some of my pictures here, my PowerPoint. And this... This, part, this says, light in, this, this is something that Jesus said in John chapter 8. He said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And that image of light in the darkness runs all the way through the New Testament here in John chapter 1. Do you remember at the beginning of John's gospel, it talks about Jesus as the light. And it says, in him was life. And that life was the light to all people. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness does not overcome it. It says in, 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 Matthew, in John's gospel. And then when Jesus is telling the people about how to live for him in Matthew chapter five and what we call the Sermon on the Mount, he says to them, you, the followers of Jesus, you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. That would be silly. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. So if we are to lights to the world, then we should be seen. And uh, Paul, when he's writing to the Ephesians, says, You were once in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. For the fruit of light consists in all goodness, righteousness and truth. Paul says that light for us as Christians is in the way we live to be good and righteous. That means to to live the way God wants us to live like Jesus and true. If we if we're good and true and righteous, if we live good Jesus lives, then we are like light shining in the darkness. Jesus then said he is the light of the world and that we should shine with his light. It's a bit like the sun and the moon. Do you know the difference between the sun and the moon? The difference is that the sun shines with a massive light that's, that's powered by nuclear energy. Uh, that, that the sun shines so brightly, it's burning bright all the time. It never stops shining. Uh, and that's like the light of Jesus that never stops shining. But the moon has no light of its own whatsoever. But you can see it really brightly in the sky because it reflects the light of the sun. The only light that the moon has is the light of the sun that is reflected from, uh, from the sun back to the earth. And we shine with the reflected light of God, of Jesus. Jesus is the true light and we shine with his light. Let's think for a moment what it means to be light in the darkness. What is it that light does? What does light do when it shines? And what can we do 
as shining, reflecting the light of Jesus into the world. I want to suggest that light does three things. Uh, that light, when light shines, it does three things that we can do as people of light, as we're going to reflect the light of Jesus into the world. The first thing that light does is, is it, the way I'm putting it here, is it dismisses darkness. It says to the darkness, go away, because we don't need darkness anymore when we've got light. When the light shines, the darkness is sent away. As soon as you put a light switch on, it's not dark anymore. Even in the dark corners of the room, they're lit up by light. As soon as you hit the light switch, there is no longer darkness. We need people to see the light of Jesus in our dark world. And when we shine with the light of Jesus, the darkness is sent away. There's a lot of darkness in the world, in this world that we live in. Uh, darkness to do with uh, people not knowing Jesus, darkness to do with people living in a way that Jesus doesn't want them to, darkness because people follow ways that are nasty and evil and selfish and bad and sometimes even influenced by the devil himself. But our light, our light that we shine reflected from Jesus helps people to see more clearly and drives away the darkness. Secondly, what does light do? It guides the way. If you've got a good source of light, it helps you to see clearly what's ahead. Like L airport runways, which help planes see where they're to land. And if we ride our bikes or drive in the dark, we put lights on. It's dangerous to do that without lights on. We mustn't do it. But when you put a light on, you can see the way and people can see you. And we are the people of Jesus reflecting the light of Jesus to show others the way, to show others the way that Jesus would want them to live. And most of all, to point them to Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. We can guide the way, not in a, a, a self-righteous way that says, I know everything and you don't, but in a humble way and just say, look, I found Jesus and you can find him as well. I found the way in which this human life is to be lived and you can find it as well through Jesus. We can reflect back to Jesus as we're reflecting his life. And thirdly, and finally, what does light do? It reveals truth. It shows what is true. It shows up truth and beauty and goodness. Light shines not only that people can see the light, but they can see other things clearly because of the light. Our light shines not so that people will see us, but so that people will see God. Jesus says people will see the good things you do, and because of that, will see your Father in heaven. There's no such thing as a secret Christian. We need to be a light all the time so that people can see the truth that is in Jesus. So we are called, you and I are called to be the light to be light that shines in the darkness. There's a lot of darkness around, particularly at this time of the year. There's a lot of darkness. But Jesus says to you and me, be the light. Be light in this dark world. Turn your lights on. So if, you're, if you've got a light with you now, if you've, if you've gathered together something that's light, then uh, turn your light on. I'm going to turn the light on on my phone. Sorry, I don't want to blind anyone who's watching this. Don't want to shine this in your eyes too much but I'm going to turn the light on on my phone you can turn the light on on your lamp or torch or whatever you brought Val can turn her light on on her fairy lights or whatever she's got and if you've got a light that you've gathered together that's good Jude over there and um David's putting his on and see a few lights and see lights coming on all over the place Magda's put her light on we can turn our lights on and we can turn our lights into the world. Many people these days are living with worry and fear because of all sorts of problems or other problems in this world. The announcement that the Prime Minister made just yesterday is only going to make things worse. People are more fearful than ever about the darkness that there is in our world. This is an opportunity for us as Christians to shine the light so that people will not be afraid. Jesus is the true light who drives away darkness, and we are to be mirrors of his light, reflecting the light of Jesus. 
some of us remember an old song that says this light of mine i'm gonna let it shine i'm or that light that song that says i'm uh, uh, i you in your small corner and i in mine we have the light of christ but are we switched on are we shining as god's people are we reflecting the light of jesus we are called to dismiss the darkness to guide the way and to show the truth jesus said to you and to me you are the light of the world every one of us is a a light to guide the way to others to find truth and righteousness and to find jesus as a way of as the way of salvation as the way to know the father we don't have our own light but we reflect the light of jesus into the world we carry the light we are church and we are called to shine let's pray father god we thank you that you call us to shine you call us to shine with your light into the dark world and we pray you'll help each of us we pray for those who are in situations where we are meeting people day by day we pray for people like Magda who are going into work and for Val who are going into work and others of us who are in situations of workplaces and situations where we're meeting people, sometimes people in need or people who are desperate in other ways. We pray, Lord, that you will be with us. We pray for those of us who have family members who are in difficult situations or family members who don't know Christ as their Lord and Saviour. We pray you'll help us to be light and life to these people reflecting the light and love of Jesus. We pray, Lord, for those of us who are in a challenge day by day to be the light of Jesus in the places we go to and the world we live in, in the phone calls we make and the Zoom calls we make and the, uh, and the contacts we have with others. Help us to be light and life. Or even, Lord, just when we're at home on our own, help us to shine with your light with every opportunity that we have. We pray for the children who go to school every day, particularly. We pray, Lord, for those who work in schools and those who are at university and those who are in education. Lord, help all of those who are in education or work in education to be Jesus in those situations, to shine with your light. And we pray, shine, Jesus, shine, that this whole world may know the Father's glory. We pray, Lord, that you will help us to shine your light into this dark world, that the whole world may know that Jesus is Lord and that he is the light of life and that he is the light to the world. Lord, hear our prayers. Amen. We're going to sing a song before we finish today. Uh, I hope we can all join in with this. This is a song of praise. Bless the Lord, O my soul. 10,000 reasons to rejoice in our Lord God. Let's sing together. Bless the Lord, O my soul.
I hope you're doing the actions. Uh, thank you for uh, for that song. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. It's good to end our time together on a note of praise. Uh, those on Zoom, please stay with us. We're going to be going into breakout groups of prayer and encouragement. Uh, if you're watching on Facebook or if you're part of this uh, on YouTube, then we're going to be finishing now. Um, we want to bless you. Do remember that we're going to be back here next Sunday for Remembrance Sunday. And we want to, and we're meeting for prayer on Wednesday on Zoom. We want to say goodbye and God bless you to those who are watching on Facebook or YouTube. Lord, the Lord bless you and be with you and give you his peace and shine his light into your hearts this week. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, as we say goodbye to those who are on uh, Facebook, we uh, 